Yay Networks. All aboard. Oh, we're back from our cruise, everyone. All aboard. Meet Captain Shane. Captain Shane. Okay. Ready to swap the poop deck? Is mm. that the phrase? <laughs> no. Swipe the poop deck? <laughs> swap? Mop? Swab? Swab? Swash. Swash? Wait, what is it? You're a swash buckler. Swashing the poop deck? Shiver me timbers. <laughs> All aboard. Oh. Shane, Captain. All right. Boat of horror. I think I'll cut you off, but we are back from our cruise. We're going to tell you all about it. I've only went overboard three times, <laughs> so I'm calling that a win. Mm-hmm. Only two times did the toaster have to get involved. <laughs> all right, Shane, what else are we talking about today after we tell them about our cruise? We're going to talk about some wonderful moments on our cruise. We have another famous Hannah Deep Dive. This one's kind of different, though. This might be a new, like, offshoot of my dumpster dive. We're already doing offshoots? Well, I'm just saying it's a different format, and you'll see. I, I really like it. I'm curious if you will like it as well, and the and the listeners. Season one of Hannah's Dumpster Dives only had three episodes, <laughs> and it's already getting a spinoff. <laughs> and then to wrap up today, we're talking about a topic that might get kind of heavy. Um, we're talking about something that I wish I could change about my disability. Mm. So we'll see how serious we get. Probably not very serious because we're not capable of that or mm-hmm. at least I'm not. Yeah. But it's going to be a fun episode. So we're starting today's episode with a segment that Shane has called Junkyard Joy. I really need to get better at naming these things. I I think that's a good name. I just throw the word junkyard into every title now. Well, we just wanted to tell you about our cruise and Shane decided that this is what it was going to be called. It's a spinoff of his smiles that he used to post every Sunday. To a lot of people, that just made sense. Yeah. And to a lot more people, it made no sense. his smiles. Yeah, so Shane used to and sometimes still does. I still do it. Yeah, uh, but for a long time, you did it every week for years without a break. And it was a post, it was first on probably Tumblr, right? And then Facebook and yep. now Instagram, uh, where he would list one thing from each day that week that had made him smile, and he called it his weekly smile post. Yeah, I think it's a very nice way to remember all the things that you have to be grateful for. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a nice way to reflect on the positives of the previous week. Yep. doesn't really mesh with Junkyard Mayhem. Well, Junkyard, junkyard mayhem Joy. Is about sadness. No, it isn't. And destruction. Not at all. And fear. But I guess we're going to give you our joy from the cruise that we just got back from. Yeah, so we were on a cruise with our friends, Holland Terizma, if you missed last week's episode. Yes. And we put out a video all about the experience. So if you haven't seen that, check it out on our YouTube. Mm-hmm. But there were some things we didn't talk about in the video. Yeah. Some moments of joy. And so, Hannah, what was one of your moments of joy? Ooh, moments of joy. Okay, well, I think one of my favorite things about the cruise was the food experience as a whole. Oh, without a doubt. I had high hopes for it, and I was not disappointed. I really liked that you ate somewhere different each night. Your waiters went with you, which was like a cool little thing because you you know the people where you're going. And they come back to your room. They sleep in your bed. <laughs> no. <laughs> and everything on the menu, aside from like some alcoholic drinks and special drinks, was free. So you could get four appetizers if you wanted four appetizers. You could get two entrees if you wanted to try both. The portions were pretty small, so you could do like multiple things like that. Um, the desserts were amazing. That's all you cared about was the desserts. Yep. I got multiple desserts each night and I would have Shane order one of them just so it didn't look like I was ordering three. She didn't have the confidence to yeah. proudly order <laughs> five desserts. So. so I'd be like, Shane, order these two and I'll order the other three. <laughs> but you you definitely, you know, got your money's worth. All yes. All the delicious food. It was amazing. That, that was another, you know, thing that I loved about it as well. Yeah. Um, one of my moments of joy began as a moment of utter terror. As we set sail the first night, the boat was pretty rocky, I would say. They made an announcement about it. Yeah, we were traversing some high seas. Yeah. And so as we're falling asleep, I am figuring out kind of what this feels like. Yeah. And it was a surreal experience for me, you know, just the feeling of your body moving up and down, 
while you're trying to fall asleep felt really weird. Not in a bad way, yeah, but just in a very different way. I drifted off to sleep, and I had a dream that I was laying in bed, not the same bed, but like my bed at home, and out of nowhere, my body would begin to levitate towards the ceiling. My feet specifically would start to rapidly rise towards the ceiling. And it was like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. What's happening? And then right when my feet were about to like touch the ceiling and I was almost like upside down, gravity would turn back on and I would slam back down (laughs) into the bed. Now, I am very fragile in real life. And in my dream, I was very aware of that. And so when it happened the first time, I was like, oh, God, like, that really hurt. And then it began to happen again. <laughs> I began to levitate. And I was like, hey, hey, like, it's happening. Help. Grab me. You know, like, pull me down. Again, feet almost at the ceiling. Grab me back on, slam down. <laughs> I, I reached the conclusion that this would not stop. And so... I said to Hannah, we need to find a way to cushion the bed and make it, like, even softer so that when I slam, <laughs> I'm not, like, maimed, you know? Oh, my God. It kept happening, it kept happening. Just, like, torture. Wow. And I finally woke up. And that was my moment of joy. It was, like, <laughs> being awake and being like, oh, it's because I'm on a bow and my... Brain is being wonky, like, wow. okay, I'm fine. I'm not actually <laughs> floating. You're not sea, actually right? doing that. Yeah, it's just like your brain to turn a rocking of the boat into a <laughs> anti gravity slam. <laughs> it was like fun the first time, and then it very quickly devolved into terror. terror. Of course. But I, I lived, I, it was only a dream. Yeah. So. That was a moment of joy for me. All right. Another moment of joy for me was, I mean, we talked about this, like we showed some of these things in the video uh, that we made, but I loved our excursion in Cabo that Charisma and I did. Unfortunately, you boys were not a part of that day. So we were not allowed in Cabo. You weren't allowed to get off the boat, but we got off the boat. Uh, The water was so beautiful at the perfect beach. We had fun walking around. It was a great little day trip and Cole and I enjoyed our day on the boat yeah I think we had a better day than you two but you'll have to watch our video about that to <laughs> decide for yourself I have another moment of joy and that was that I was able to poop oh on the cruise okay in the bathroom don't worry oh. um but yeah whenever I travel I have problems with my consistency oh my god oh, not consistency that's a terrible word to use <laughs> Uh, my, Shane, this is my regularity. So unnecessary. And I was irregular for the first few days. Oh my god! Unable to get done what needed to get done. People are gonna start clicking off this video On if you don't three wrap or it up. Four, I blossomed. And, <laughs> oh my god! And okay, I, and then Shane had a great time. So what's another joy? Why don't we actually move on from that one? Another joy was after the cruise. On the way home, uh, driving from San Diego back to LA. We stopped at a restaurant in Del Mar called Jake's something. Might just be called Jake's, Jake's something no restaurant idea. by the sea, maybe. But I ordered maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you just made that up. Sounds like a really beautiful name. Uh, I ordered and ate the best fish and chips. Yeah. Of my life. I never like fish and chips, and I would if we go back, I would order it. It was one of the most amazing things I've ever had. The texture was close to chicken, which well, might, it was softer, but it looked like yeah, it was. It wasn't it, flaky. Uh, it had the mouthfeel <laughs> of a a dissolving candy mixed with no chicken. No, no I'm not. That I'm not sounds it awful. Well. It was amazing. Uh, I also charisma and I. The reason we went to this restaurant, we went there on the way down, saw this dessert. And Charisma and I were too full to get it. So we decided to come back on our way back from the cruise. And so that's why we stopped at the restaurant, you know, for the second time and got this gigantic slice of ice cream cake. It was bigger than my chest. Yeah. It was bigger than our heads. It was bigger than my head. It was amazing. It was, I have no words. Like I really have no words. I would drive two hours right now to go get a slice. It was just 
Incredible. I did not have a syndrome by the way. I'm not big on desserts. No. But Hannah. You were still gumming on your fish and chips. <laughs> no, I was letting the fish and chips <laughs> dissolve in my <laughs> mouth because that's what they did. They were I know. so soft and perfect. Hannah and Joel and Jerusma devoured that slice of cake. Yeah. And uh, it was a good time for all. <laughs> Cole ended up with the tiny piece. I cut it kind of wonkily and he got like a sliver and then Charisma and I had like big pieces. A sliver was still the size of my hand. Yeah, but I was like, and this is for you, Cole. I'll just take the rest. <laughs> <laughs> so those are a few of our moments of Trans Air Joy yep. that we experienced. That hers was amazing. Mm-hmm. Very accessible experience overall. Um, but check out that video if you want to really see the experience yep all right we are going to take a quick break and then we will be back with Ooh, junkyard no dumpster dive my dumpster dive <laughs> dumpster dive <laughs> it's been off version i'm ready whatever that means mm-hmm All right, we are back with my dumpster dive. A little different this week. I'm doing two different topics, okay? Two dumpster dives? Yeah, and they are two different examples of unlikely simultaneous historical events. I saw a post about this recently. It listed like 10 things that happened at the same time in history that are kind of mind-blowing, like things that you think wouldn't be at the same time. And so I looked up more and this is like a thing that, you know, there's, there's articles about this Things being happening like at the same time. <laughs> this thing. It does no, happen. Just like lists of like, I bet you don't think these happened at the same time, you know? And so I picked two of them and I'm going to go in depth on both of them. Can you give me a flavor of this? Like, like, do you have examples that aren't the ones that you're going to cover? No. Okay. I mean, I do in my brain, but I'm going to do this like next week. So <laughs> no, I'm going to keep all of them and I'm just going to begin. And this, this is your, you're not getting a flavor. You're getting the whole dish. Um, uh, Are you ready? This, uh, this episode is very food oriented. I know. So this is number one. Give this is the, what we're going to talk about. Give me the mouth feel. All right, Shane. Woolly mammoths existed when the Great Pyramids were being built. No. <laughs> this is going to be Shane the entire time. He's just going to be in disbelief. I kind of thought, I don't know if it's just me. I thought that woolly mammoths were dinosaurs me too they're not as the, as the learner of this information yeah i just want to tell you i thought the woolly mammoths were dinosaur times yeah like t-rexes and woolly mammoths were out there fighting each other and that the pyramids were built in all oh, my history teachers throughout <laughs> my school and you're gonna be like jesus shame <laughs> we did better than this mm-hmm. i thought they were built in like maybe the 1400s 1500s the 1500s uh, yeah Shane. I don't know. The 1500s, like in medieval times? Yeah. The Great Pyramids? <laughs> I mean, we, didn't, we had to get to a point of technology. Like, oh, basically, really no. The whole technology. point of them is that people can't, they still don't know how they're made. I don't know how they were made okay. in the 1500s. Mm-hmm. Let's just begin because this is, this is painful. <laughs> the Great Pyramids were built from roughly 2550 to 2490 BC. Okay. So Shane, you're like... You're like 3,000 right years. Off. I mean, you're 4,000 years off. Okay. Okay. So it's like three, 4,000 years ago, right? 5,000 years 5, ago. 5,000 years ago. Mm. See, math is not. About. History, math, no thank you. So go all the way back to zero, you know, 2,000 years ago. Then go all the way back 2,500 more years. Or, like from us to Jesus and then back the equal amount. I think that counting time using Jesus as zero point <laughs> I know. is a stupid method. I agree, Just but go ahead year that. zero. Okay, we well. We should make a better system. Nothing no, I think we'll just stick with what we use now. That would be really confusing if we decided to rebrand. Who do I email about this? Okay. Your timekeepers. So this era in you know 2500 BC was during Egypt's old kingdom era. That's when they were built. And there are three great pyramids and they were each built by three different pharaohs. Okay. Okay. So there's Khufu. I don't know if I'm saying this correctly. I watched videos on how to pronounce them, but that was last night. So Khafre and Mankare. Yeah. I mean, I guess one of those was not said. Right? I know, but <laughs> I tried. The biggest one is Khufu. It contains more than 2 million stone blocks, each one ranging from two and a half tons to 15 tons. Two million? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you sure? That's what you know how many a source there? said. These are all sources. I mean, I don't know if the New York Times is wrong. It's not my problem. 
Who's your Who's your source? <laughs> Pyramids were built by aliens. Dot com. <laughs> yeah, literally. But they they honestly don't know how they were made. It was it's like technology that we don't understand how they did it. We cannot even conceptualize one million. I know. I can conceptualize a building made of a hundred thousand. Yeah. Of those. I know. Wow. And a pharaoh, he was like, "Build that for me. I want my tomb to be in that." Yeah. I mean, not to you know overlook the human suffering that probably well, no they actually the article i read says that like the people that built it were from all different areas of like, like this kingdom and it was like an honor probably like i don't know oh, if really? that's true but like they were well fed I had they no lived idea. nearby i yeah. don't know see i thought they were, it was more of a slave thing. i don't it, that's not what the article said but again like i'm i'm not positive about that okay but who knows but it could have been it sounds like it would be awful so maybe the woolly mammoths Built the pyramids. Were part of the. I mean, what other animal? Well, no shame. Did okay. I just jump way too far ahead. No, we're moving on to woolly mammoths now. But unfortunately, they did not live in Egypt. I they're. I solved it. They're not from Egypt. They lived in, uh, like the northern hemisphere, so North America, Europe, and Asia, all in the northern area where it's cold because they're woolly. I, oh yeah. Okay, so they're not in Egypt. Right. So while the pyramids are being built. They don't even know about woolly mammoths, if most likely. If they had the ability to build a two million giant block pyramid, they must have had a ready to get a woolly mammoth down there. <laughs> Float it down the ocean. <laughs> okay, so woolly mammoths lived from around 300,000 years ago to about 10,000 years ago during the Pleistocene era, which I learned was the era right before our era that we're in now. Wow. I know. 300,000 to 10,000 years ago. Yep. They had a long run. Good for them. I know. How long have humans lived? I don't know. How, I don't know, Shane. There were humans. There were pre-humans. There were, you know, other species. Anyway, so woolly mammoths, on the other hand, lived from about 300,000 years ago until the last known group passed away. <laughs> <laughs> All at once. <laughs> In uh, about 1650 BC, which was a thousand years after the Great Pyramids were built. Whoa. A thousand years. Holy mammoths had a good run. They really did. They lived a long time. I know. And they are one of the species that's extinct that we know the most about because we have found like entirely preserved bodies of woolly mammoths in Alaska and Siberia, just frozen. Interesting. Like that you can, you know, see pictures. They really are just, they're just there. Did you learn it all about woolly mammoths? Well, I learned that there's an organization that is dedicated to bringing back the woolly mammoth from extinction <laughs> with DNA that they got from a frozen body. That's like Jurassic Park in real life. Yeah. And they hope to have it done by 2027. They're doing it? Yes. yes. You... I just told you they're an organization dedicated to doing it. Okay. But like... I should make an organization <laughs> dedicated to, like, you know, owning every continent in the world that well, they yeah. going to do it. They claim that they should have it done by 2027. Who is overseeing I know. that process? I, and at first, I like... they're being very careful. What do you think about that? Do you think that we should or shouldn't do that as humans? Bring back Willie Mammoth? <laughs> yeah. Are they going to help us build more pyramids? No, probably not. They're really, They're just elephants. They're mixing the DNA with elephants. So it won't be a real Willie Mammoth? No, I think it will be. It's like a science thing. It's going to be, a, it's gonna be an Partially. They're splicing its DNA onto an elephant. I don't know. It's, it's going to be mostly woolly mammoth. It sounds like a slippery slope. I know. It really does. However, I found out that woolly mammoths went extinct because they were overhunted by humans. So at least it's like righting a wrong. We'll leave it to humans. <laughs> To ruin something amazing. Isn't that, I really thought that woolly mammoths died with the dinosaurs. Like, that was my I understanding. Too. I was like, it all died at the same time. And that was it. Yep. Ice Age and then asteroids. No, Ice Age was after. Ice Age is like right right before wow. us. It's just. I want one woolly mammoth to be brought back. <laughs> no, two. So that they can be friends. Yeah. But if you told the sea one in real life. That's true. No, it would be sad. Because it would be kept in like a zoo. Yeah. It wouldn't be a free woolly mammoth. <laughs> no, it probably wouldn't be. If we release it in the wild. Maybe I'm a preserve. Sure. Maybe a woolly mammoth preserve. I'm sure we'd find another way to hunt them. <laughs> we'd True. find a way to mess it up. You could pay to hunt them in our, the preserve. Our track record is not good. I know. <laughs> and what's the point of bringing back a woolly mammoth just because we can? Well, the scientific. I think if you can like prove that you should do it. Yeah. But like not do it. 
<laughs> Just for the science of it, yeah? Yeah. It's a mathematical proof. All right, are you ready for the next one? Yes. Okay. I'm so ready. Shane, you're going to love it. It okay. is about the Oregon Trail. My favorite video game? Well, I know that you're a big fan of the game, Oregon Trail. Fun fact, the Oregon Trail game was invented by some guys that went to my uh, college, Carleton College. I mean, I found that out. That was a moment in history yeah. conversion for me. Yeah, Shane was like, no way. That's amazing. Even I set foot on the campus yeah. <laughs> where Oregon Trail was created. Well, I think they might have done it after college, but I'm not, I'm not, maybe that's not true. Let I don't know. Dream, okay. <laughs> it was, it was conceptualized there, I bet. We're going to have to ford the river. Okay. So Shane, <laughs> I know you're a big fan of the game, but what is the Oregon Trail? <sighs> I was very <laughs> I didn't really know anything about it, so I'm curious if you do. I am hoping that playing the game was not a complete waste of mm -hmm. brain space and that it taught me something real. Based on the game, I would guess that the Oregon Trail was a common route for settlers mm -hmm. traveling west. From where to where? From the east. From where? To the origin. To where? <laughs> where? <laughs> I mean, a lot of it takes place like in the desert plains, not desert plains, but the great plains. Yeah. So maybe I'll say like the northern route, maybe like Boston to oh. <laughs> Portland. No, I mean, that's I a good one. That's a, probably won't hold that no, that's that a really way. good guess. I mean, Boston probably was. Too. That is a really good guess. Okay. So the Oregon Trail was a roughly 2,200 mile long wagon route. Hey, that's not the whole country. No, it connected the Missouri River in Independence, Missouri to Oregon City, Oregon. So you started at the river. You started in Missouri at the river. Probably you got, you got there from, I don't know, from somewhere. You took the river. Then you got off the river. <laughs> Or maybe they lived there. I don't know. But you start at the Missouri River and you go through the country to Oregon. Interesting. And it took travelers about five months Oof. from start to end. That is a rough, on this trail. rough journey. <laughs> Horrible. Okay, so it began as something that could only be traversed on foot or on horseback. And it was used by fur traders. And then it was progressively cleared by like people in wagons they were like we've got to get through so they were just like clearing it took years um but there's in, a woman mammoth up here should we tell it yeah it's in our way literally um so by 1836 wagons could get from missouri to idaho and then finally seven years later the first wagon arrived in oregon they finally cleared it so in 1843 the first wagon had traversed the entire oregon trail and it thus became the it's oregon trail 1843 is that when you thought this was happening i should have asked you when it was happening i would have well i think i would have said the 1800s really maybe the 1700s i would have said 1700s yeah i, I would have said a long time ago yeah what was happening at the same time and we're not there yet shame <laughs> Uh, a little more about the Oregon Trail. From the 1830s to the 1860s, about 400,000 settlers who were farmers, ranchers, and miners used the trail. Miners as in people that mined the earth, not miners as in children. <laughs> uh, 10,000 people and 400,000 children. <laughs> yeah, miners. Uh, so these people seized land from the Native Americans who lived there and began using it to mine and farm. So hmm. really another, nice. Another example of yep. humans being the worst. Great job. And then finally, the first transcontinental railway was established or completed in 1869, and that defeated the purpose of the trail, and it was then defunct. Imagine being like the last <laughs> wagon user to do that yeah. trip, and then like the next train pulls in. <laughs> after they arrive, they're like, oh, you should just take a train. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I got dysentery eight times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Shane. So I'm going to tell you something that was invented at the same time that the Oregon Trail began. Okay. okay. It's a piece of technology as a hint. What do you think it was? When the Oregon Trail began. Yeah, 1843. So like mid 1800s. Yeah. What do you think was being invented around that time? Oh. The when, wheel? When was that? No, it couldn't have been the wheel. The wheel had to be around. Uh, Love you. I was kidding. <laughs> they were using wagons. <laughs> I took it as a, a real idea for a second. Oh. Um, not fire. Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, let's see. A gun. A gun? Yeah. No, I think guns were earlier. Okay. Had Good. Earlier. Yeah, they were earlier. <laughs> um, Good guess, though. No, nothing electric. Although I don't know when electricity <laughs> is discovered. Uh, oh, my God. If electricity was discovered before that, I'm going to be embarrassed. Um, I am going to say, final answer, penicillin. Penicillin. Yep. Wow. Okay, well, first of all, electricity was discovered by Benjamin Franklin in the 1700s. Uh, just so you know, I just Googled it. So your guess is penicillin. Yeah. Which actually, I should find out when, pen- when, when it was invented. 1928. So you're, at, you're ahead of the time. It is not penicillin. It is, Shane, the fax machine. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Yes. Okay, in 1843. I was, I was way off by thinking... Yeah, that electricity had needed. I thing. know. <laughs> a Scottish inventor named Alexander Baines, I assume that's how you say it. Uh, Mr. Baines. Yeah, secured a British patent for what he termed the electric printing telegraph. They had internet? Don't you need internet? No, it's not internet. It allowed messages to be sent across wires and printed at a receiving station far away from where you began. And it led to the first commercially practical telefax service between Paris and Lyon. Is that how you say it? Lyon? Uh-huh. In 1861. What? They were sending faxes yeah. back then? In a practical way in 1861 while people were traversing oh. the Oregon Trail. <laughs> people in Paris are like, what are you doing? Hon, send a fax to Portland. <laughs> yeah. Let them know that we'll be there in mm, five to six months <laughs> if everything goes perfectly. No, we didn't have fa- That was in Paris, Shane. They weren't, the, the settlers were not sending faxes. So were we just like way less technologically advanced? Well, it here? seems like it. What were we doing? I don't know. We were too busy worrying about forty rivers. Well, yeah, we were stealing land and mining it, and people in Paris were like, "Send a message <laughs> over silly. the wires." <laughs> silly Americans, <laughs> what are they doing? But yeah, can you believe that? That's so. Well, then, what was like the telephone invented? Oh Jesus! Alexander Graham Bell, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I had to do that for the bonus points, although I'm probably wrong. The telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell. Boom. You're right. Nailed it. Uh, in 1876. So like... After. A little bit after. Yeah. Interesting. Not that far after, though. Hannah, yeah, no, if you could go back in time... Wait, wasn't Alexander... Was Alexander Graham Bell American? Yeah, he was. So at least we got that. Yeah, but we didn't get the pyramids. <laughs> uh, but don't worry, we're gonna do the woolly mammoth. Um, if you could go back in time and ride the Oregon Trail, mm-hmm. you know, completely authentically, uh huh, no technology other than the fax machine. Yeah, would you do it? No. Why? Why would you? People died well, so people much. Died today. I would not want to do that. What? F- like that sounds like such a pain in the butt. You I have mean, to have food with you. You have to have food. No. You get a rattlesnake bite. There's all those things in the game that happen to you. I don't want that to happen to me. Would you do it? No, I would never. I would (laughs) make it a day. Wagons are not wheelchair accessible. What do you think? Why do you think that I, just because I can like walk, I would not make it either? You've always struck me as like a woman of the prairie. I would like to live. I would like to live in the prairie now, but I like my modern conveniences. You like your fast machine. (laughs) I would at least need to be in like 1860 for a for a practical fax machine. (laughs) Well, that was very interesting. Thank you for enlightening me on those two yeah. very specific <laughs> Well, slightly different than a typical dumpster dive, but I kind of like that format. So all of you listening and watching, yeah. at your next party, lift one of those bad boy facts out. And I've got a lot more where those came from. Blow everyone's mind. Yeah. Hey, do you guys know that <laughs> like the that. pyramids? <laughs> okay. And your guests will slowly... It's a good way to end the party. All right, so we're going to take a break now, and then we'll be back with Shane's final segment about what he'd like to change about his disability. So ending on a good note. We're going to make it fun. (laughs) We are back, and it is time to talk about the one thing I would change about my disability. Oh, boy. (laughs) Hannah, what do you think it is? What do I think it is? Yeah. Oh, um... My guess would be something about like eating food, chewing. You nailed it. Really? You actually nailed it. 
<laughs> oh. oh, I know you. You do know me. Food is the ultimate thing in my life. Yeah, that's true. I want to give an important disclaimer here. Um, when I talk about like things that I would change about my disability, I don't mean to imply that my life with a disability is a negative thing or that I would, you know, cure my disability or anything like that. Um, but people all the time are like wondering, they ask us, if you could change something about your disability, mm -hmm. what would it be? Yeah, I and think they're all like, it's walking, right? right? It's a walk. <laughs> ah, he's so small. Um, <laughs> but, you know, obviously, if it were practical, the things that I would change are more in the world, you know? Like, I wish everywhere was accessible. I wish that disabled people had access to the resources and care that they need, no matter what, things like that. Um, but for a hypothetical, fun little experiment, mm -hmm. I thought long and hard about what I would change about my physical self. Now, obviously, I am drop-dead handsome. <laughs> nothing to change there. <laughs> I am brilliant and uh -huh. hilarious. Like, personality, 10 out of 10. Okay. Uh, not a whole lot to improve. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I was wondering how long you would let me go. Um... <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't change anything, it would be improving the strength of my mouth and my tongue and my swallow so that I could eat anything that I wanted. Mm -hmm. My ability to eat kind of took a big hit when I was in eighth grade. I lost a lot of strength that year and it became difficult to eat and swallow many of the foods that I had been able to eat easily up to that point. So then when I met Shane seven years ago, uh, his jaw, I think like over the first year that I knew him, his jaw got a lot weaker. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like the eighth grade thing where I met him and he could eat these things. And then all of a sudden over the next year, it like drastically declined. And that was extremely difficult. Yeah. It became such an issue that like Hannah and I would go out on a dinner date and I would take two bites of food yeah. and my jaw was instantly too tired to chew another. Or even like soup, you know, like yeah. even just swallowing, you I, were like, I'm really tired. Uh -huh. I, and it would be like, I would begin to swallow, but like I couldn't hold my lips together. Yeah. So like soup would come out of my mouth. Yeah. And when that happens, I much preferred to just not eat. Yeah. Um, which eating is my and our favorite activity. Yep. So that was really difficult. Mm -hmm. And then treatments came about. Yeah. And within that first year of treatment, Shane, that was like the first uh, main ability that he got back. I yeah. think like kind of neck control was part of it, maybe like trunk control, but the biggest thing and the most noticeable and most helpful thing was jaw strength and like swallowing. And as I came back, it was so fun. I, all the time I'd be like, Hannah, don't get for me a pretzel. <laughs> I haven't eaten a pretzel yeah. in 10 years. Let me see if I can chew Yeah, it. in that first year, it honestly was like, let me see if I can eat that. You know, he'd be like, give me a piece of corn. Like, give me that. I haven't eaten that. Give me like a potato gel. Like all just random things. And he'd be like, I can swallow it so easily. It was so much joy that I felt just being able to eat more foods that I love. Yeah. Today, I mean, I've maintained that level of strength. Yeah. I can eat way more than I used to be able to 10 20 years ago. Yep. But I still am very weak. Yeah. Like today, Hannah warmed up a piece of pizza uh, leftover and the cheese was too chewy for me to like effectively eat. So we have to get a little creative here and there with how I eat foods. Mm -hmm. um, one way that we help me eat better is Hannah will like pulverize my food for me. Yeah. Either with a fork and a knife or we've gone so far as to blend yeah, my food. Yeah, we have. Some very weird foods. Yeah, I think the weirdest thing that we blend is a salad that my mom makes. Shane doesn't ever eat lettuce. Like, that's kind of one of the things that he's never really been able to yeah, chew. Sure. I, don't, I don't really want to. No. But. Yeah, and I could cut it small. He has no interest in a salad, so he's like, no, thank you. But my mom makes a salad that is, like, it's diced really small already. It's, I think, what, cucumbers, tomatoes, um, onion. And lots of lemon juice. juice. Yeah. It's so good. And it's diced really small. We have it in the summer and the flavor of it is delicious. Oh, and pepper, like bell peppers. Right. Um, and 
So that we actually use like a little blender thing and pulverize it so that it's basically a mush. It becomes the same consistency as like applesauce. applesauce. <laughs> yeah. And it, it feels horrible, but it's so good. The taste is so good. So Shane does that. But there are all kinds of foods today that I cannot enjoy that I would love to be able to enjoy. Well, you can eat pretty much anything, Shane, if we cut it. It's right. that you want to bite into like a, a sandwich. I And I can't open my mouth. Yeah. Anyway. That's another part of my weakness. I would love to be able to just gnaw into <laughs> a cheesesteak or a big <laughs> fat burger mm-hmm. or a piece of pizza. Yeah. Without having to worry about cutting it. Like, obviously, I'm very grateful that we have the ability to like blend my food or have Hannah cut it up or that we can take the time to let me chew slowly. Yeah, but Um, if you could change one thing. It would totally do that. (laughs) I feel like we need to open a restaurant that specializes in SMA-friendly food. Mm. Only soft food. Soft fish and chips. A lot of soups. Mm. We'll call it Rubs, rub. Okay. It's too easy. That actually is a pretty the good name. name. Invented itself. I have to give it to you. Investors, if you're out there, <laughs> I have a brilliant idea for you. I, I don't know if other people will be into that idea, though, Shane. How many how many patrons are we really going to get? It should be like three people with SMA <laughs> that live in the area. Yeah. Not a whole lot else. No. I think it's a great idea. Maybe we'll have a soft menu and a firm menu. You know? <laughs> What? You can, when they come in, would you like soft or firm? You're already trying to ruin the theme of my restaurant. Okay. It's soft food only. Okay, whatever. And uh, do you remember the soft food reviews (laughs) that I used to leave (laughs) online? Yes, I remember. You went through like a month where that you did it every, every day. You would write a review for a restaurant that we had gone to. Specifically about how soft the food was. Yeah. I never gave them bad reviews. Because I don't like, you know, being mean to people. Yeah. I would leave them five stars and then just ridicule the softness. <laughs> no, but sometimes <laughs> it was a good good softness. Yeah, You'd sometimes. be like, this was so soft. Here, I have one that I really enjoyed writing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, this is for one of my favorite pizza places in Minnesota. Actually, my only, it's my favorite pizza place in Minnesota. Shane wrote five. He gave five stars. And then he gave it. It's Punch Pizza. Punch Pizza. If you want to go find the review, it's on a Punch Pizza in Minneapolis. Okay. Shane wrote, the flavor of the margarita pizza was spot on, mouthwateringly delicious, but <laughs> but due to my severely underdeveloped jaw muscles, I spent three to five minutes chewing each bite. This was fine, again, because I immensely enjoyed the flavor of each. <laughs> The flavor of each relentlessly chewed bite. Salad was very hard to chew, but that's true. I'm sorry. Okay. Salad was very hard to chew, but that's true of every salad I've ever (laughs) attempted to eat. The end. I can only imagine the owner of that punch pizza (laughs) opening up his computer, reading the reviews, and seeing my review. (laughs) Wondering if he needs to change anything Shame. about his business. That is the. <laughs> I hope people know that the the cheese on their pizza it is very chewy, but it is I love it. I said it was. I delicious. need to write competing reviews that are like, <laughs> cheese was the perfect amount of chewiness. So that is the thing that I would change about my disability. That might surprise you. Yeah. You know, I think people look at me and they think that I would prefer to be able to walk or to use my arms more effectively, but. It's really all about what I put in my mouth. Yeah. Um, that's my biggest area of joy in life, other than Hannah. But. Maybe maybe also another thing I would change about your disability, I think the only thing is to sit unassisted, because then you could go on like any amusement park really? ride. A- amusement <laughs> park ride? Yeah. Not an airplane? Oh, that would help in an airplane. But I was just thinking like, we, you know, we have our airplane thing down. Amusement park rides you just can't really do unless they're accessible. The, the biggest thing you <laughs> like once a year about my disability <laughs> is for the is for me to be able to ride it. Yeah, coaster. or like you could sit in a kayak, maybe. I don't need roller coasters when I have cruises. Oh, that's true. Where I'm levitating <laughs> to the ceiling. That's true. Or maybe mammoths. 
mammoths. In the not too distant future. 2027. Who needs roller coasters? The year of the mammoths. The year of mammoths. Okay. <laughs> all right, everyone. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this, please leave us a review. Five stars. Share it with your friends. Mm-hmm. Tell everyone you know. Yep. It is a junkyard out there. Do you have anything? Watch out for the woolly mammoths. <laughs> you know, it's a junkyard out there. Watch out for the woolly mammoths. Well, then we'll let <laughs> Hannah do that one. Oh, yeah. Well, better, try better now. Why don't you give one? It is a junkyard out there. I bet you we can build a pyramid. Oh, Jesus. That was a good one. All right, everyone. See you later. <laughs>